Well, y'all, in that same spirit, turn with me to the gospel according to Luke chapter 2. I got a lot of Bible to read today because it's Christmas time. And so if there's any time where I can read a lot of verses, I give myself permission in the Christmas and Advent season. Amen. So get your Bibles out because we got a long way to go. Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 20. And it reads, So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Verse eight, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you and he is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Verse 16, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told the shepherds said to them. Sorry, what had been told them about this child. Verse 18, and all who heard it were amazed at all these things and pond, and sorry, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Pray with me from the title today, Trauma, Treasure, and Truth. Lessons from Mary at Christmas. God, we need you today. We honor you today. Speak, Lord. Your children are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Double love, I, I, I make it no secret that I love the Christmas season. I've always loved the Christmas season. I, in particular, love being a black Christian at Christmas, okay? I love being a black Christian at Christmas so much, I was almost late today to get my poinsettias because I said I can't be in black church on Christmas week and Christmas day and not have some poinsettias, okay? I love being a black Christian at Christmas. And one of the things that I've always heard growing up in church, growing up as a child, is that Mary pondered those things in her heart, that she treasured these things in her heart. And I always, I always wondered what was so significant about Mary treasuring these things. But there's a reason why I began this sermon reading a lot of scripture today, okay? The reason why I read a lot of scripture today is because many of us have memories of Christmas that were passed down orally, that were passed down uh, from folks we love that are not actually scripture. 
Okay, so there's a whole lot of stories we know about Christmas because of the movies we watch or the Christmas carols we sing. But sometimes we forget to actually take a look at what the Bible actually says. What happened? What were the conditions? And how did it occur? And I'm here to suggest to you today, beloved, that as much as I love being a black Christian at Christmas, I think we've done a disservice at Christmas that I want to deal with today. I think we've overlooked some things that I want us to deal with today. I think we've overlooked how traumatic the birth of Jesus was for Mary. I want to I want to deal with Mary today because we often start off our, our Christmas time narratives around the fact that the Virgin Mary was was blessed with child and and the Holy Spirit would come over her and she would give birth to a child and and she says you know uh, uh, hey, whatever is your will let it be done to me and and, and all of those things and, and 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 I know that that happens and I and I understand that Mary is willing to whatever your will is Lord I step into it I recognize that Mary finds companionship through Elizabeth her cousin I understand that every after a little bit of time her fiance Joseph gets a dream himself and he comes on board and says I'm not gonna divorce you quietly like I was going to I'm gonna keep you but I just want to talk about the fact that that stuff is traumatic okay what, what I want to deal with today is every now and again, when God calls you to step into an assignment that you did not ask for, while the byproduct of that thing may be wonderful and beneficial to everybody else, every now and again to you is traumatic. That's what I want to deal with today because, because I want to suggest to us today, y'all, that, that Mary was minding her business. She was minding her business and, and, and Mary was faithful to the Lord and, and Mary was betrothed to Joseph and Mary really wasn't asking for too much out of the ordinary. Mary was happy with her life. And, and, and let me just run down the laundry list of things that happened to Mary. I'm not even talking about when she first realized that she's pregnant because that's, that's a whole nother sermon. I'm talking about among the time where she's supposed to give birth to the baby Jesus. And once Jesus arrives, there's still some trauma that Mary has to endure simply because she's been given the assignment of being the mother of Jesus. There's some traumatic experiences that in the black church we don't talk about as trauma. And in the black church, we focus on the fact that Jesus was born. And I love that Jesus was born. And in the black church, we talk focus on the fact that the wise men were able to see the stars and could bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I love gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But what we don't talk about is how much trauma Mary had to endure just to bring Jesus to life. Just in Luke chapter 2, that's why I read it, so y'all wouldn't say I'm making it up. But just in Luke chapter 2, can we look at it starting at verse 4? Can we look at what happens? First thing is, uh, her fiancé had to go and give an account of the fact uh, that he, his fiancé, and this baby that wasn't his were in the line of David and were reporting for duty. Trauma. Trauma trauma this man that almost divorced her quietly needed a whole angel to tell him don't you do that Joseph don't don't you walk away from her and so now here are Mary and Joseph leaving her home going to Bethlehem to make an account to be counted up I know there was some trauma there I know it was an uncomfortable car ride I know they weren't in cars I know they were walking and whatever they were doing but I just feel like it was uncomfortable I feel like Joseph probably had an attitude, and I'm not mad at Joseph because Joseph got dealt a strange hand. But I just feel like it was traumatic when Joseph had to show up in the line of David, which is the privilege line, and Joseph had to say, I'm here giving account for my pregnant fiance, and that baby ain't mine. I just, it's traumatic. It's traumatic. And, and then, 
God had the nerve to induce Mary while they up there giving an account for who's coming. Like she couldn't get back home in the privacy of her own home to have Jesus. The Bible says while they were there, Mary gives birth to Jesus. And that's why there's no room in the inn. Okay. Let, 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 me, let, me just, let me just paint the picture the way the Bible paints the picture. Okay. They did not intend to stay in Bethlehem. Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me just paint the picture how we would when we talking about our family and them when they had the baby before they were supposed to have the baby and you get the phone call and you'll be like, hold up, you weren't due for another two weeks. Let me tell you something. I was born in Queens, New York. Shout out to New York City. All right. I wasn't supposed to be born in Queens, New York. I was supposed to be born in Boston, Massachusetts. That's where my mother and father and sister were living. But my mother got sick while she was carrying me, so she wanted to be next to her mama, my grandmother, and my grandmother was in Queens. And so I was born in Queens, so really I'm a New Yorker, y'all, y'all, y'all. I'm really a New Yorker. I just don't be messing with y'all. I say I'm from Texas because y'all don't like it when we say we're from New York, but we didn't live here. But technically, I was born in St. John's Hospital, Queens, New York. Check my birth certificate. But every now and again, thank you, Malik. Every now and again, life surprises us. Okay? And if we're honest, some of them surprises are traumatic. Okay? So, bad enough, they had to go up here and give an account and register and all that. But while they're doing that, Jesus is born. Now, it's not like they planned to have the baby there because they could have made accommodations that way, right? Uh, but, but now that they're stuck, not only does Mary have the trauma of giving birth to Jesus before she thought it was time, but now she's got to make immediate provision for Jesus in a place that does not know her, right? She has, there's no room in the inn. So that's how we end up in this manger. That's how we end up with Jesus wrapped in cloth, not in the best of things, but in literally whatever she could find. Y'all, that's traumatic. And so Mary has gone from being a virgin who was betrothed to her love, the love of her life, who has now become someone who is carrying uh, uh, the Messiah. And she said, okay, it's cool, Lord, whatever you want to do, be it unto me. She's made it through whatever arguments or lack thereof she had with Joseph about him getting ready to quietly divorce her, but he chooses not to. They're going up into Bethlehem, registering to be counted in the line of David, which the prophecy said that Jesus would come from the line of David and then she can't even catch a break she gives birth right there and then she gives birth there's no room in the end she's in a familiar place uh and then y'all strangers come to visit her now how many of y'all know when a new mother has a baby when she gets to the house you got to be real special to get an invite to the house, okay? It's levels to this. You, you might have to wait till she bring the baby to church if you want to see the baby. Because, you know, when you, when you first have a baby, it's only a select few that can really be up in there. Close family, close friends, right? But the Bible says that Mary has gone through all this other stuff. She's finally given birth to the Messiah. They're in a town that she didn't intend to be in. There's no room in the end. She had to make do with whatever she could. Her husband, who's now accepted this whole plot, is still trying to make peace with the fact that this boy is not one that he conceived. And now you mean to tell me strangers are knocking on the door. See, the wise men that we love to talk about who, who understood that baby Jesus was going to be there and, and the sign given to them was that Jesus would be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Uh, well, listen, they knock on the door and they affirm that Jesus is in fact the Messiah. But y'all, I can just imagine that for Mary, this is trauma upon trauma. Here she is, just trying to carry out what God has asked of her. And now she's actually done the thing. She's birthed the baby. She's made provision. She's found a way to make sure that Jesus is safe, that Jesus is clothed, that Jesus is comfortable. And here come these three strangers saying, we know who your son is. We've been waiting on him. He's going to save us. 
Now, if Mary was a black mother, I feel like she would get defensive right away. Don't be telling me what my baby gonna do. He's just a baby, right? But but they had they had dreams about who this baby was, and they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh because they recognized that though he was a baby, he was the king of all kings. He was the Messiah. That is traumatic. Because at this point, right about verse 19, after all of this is going on, look at it, look at it, go with me. Verse 17, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. So not only do strangers come knocking at the door, but now they talking. Now they telling everybody that the child is there. So now she can't even get no rest because now they spreading word about who baby Jesus is. Verse 18, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Verse 19, but Mary. I, I like the but. The, the Bible gives us a moment to catch our breath. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. It's too much. Every now and again, even when you are in the center of God's will, stuff will be moving so fast that all you have capacity for is to treasure it. Come here, somebody who's had a good 2022. Come here, somebody, where the things you asked God to do, God actually did. Come here, somebody, where God has actually wowed you and blown your mind. Even in the midst of wonderfully answered prayers, sometimes all you have capacity for is to treasure it in your heart. Because it's too much. There's, there's, there's a new demand on Mary now. Now she is truly the mother of the Messiah. Now she's given birth to this baby and the shepherds have come and they've told everybody else who he is and Joseph has registered them and he's in the lineage of David and now everything is happening and she couldn't stop it if she tried. Have you ever lived through an experience where you're right in the center of God's will and the byproduct of being in God's will is great, but the process to get there was traumatic. Coming for anybody today who feels guilty because your prayers have been answered, but the process towards getting them answered felt some kind of way to you, but you feel guilty about saying out loud how traumatic those experiences have been because all anybody else sees is your answered prayers. I'm talking to people today who have wonderful IG grids. I'm talking to people today whose phones are always ringing with the people they actually want to talk to. I'm talking to people today who 2022 has been good to you and God has done what God said God would do, but the process was traumatic. Sometimes, what you've had to go through to get where God is taking you can be so traumatic that all you got left is capacity to treasure. I, God, I, all I can do is treasure this. I, I, God, I, I understand, Lord. I know, but God, all I got capacity left for is to treasure this. Can, can, can I help us? Can I bring us into some current events? It's been a hard week this week for black America. It's been a hard week this week for America. Uh, we got news about Stephen Twitch boss. We got news about Meg Thee Stallion's ongoing trauma in the courtroom. We, we got news about whatever Diddy is up to with all of his folks. There's a lot of stuff going on this week. And I wonder if even for these celebrities who we think are not human if the trauma has gotten so bad that all they can do is treasure what's wrong with you Meg Thee Stallion you got all these number one hits you got Grammys why are you crying on the stand what's wrong with you Twitch you dancing two days ago before you passed we have the unmitigated gall to assume we understand somebody's trauma because we've been privy to their treasure. 
because we've been privy to their treasure, we think we understand their trauma. But y'all, we spent two months in a triggered series. And y'all understand it does not take much for somebody to be triggered back to a place they cannot get out of. And it does not matter that they came to church with a praise report. And it does not matter that God answered their prayer. Sometimes all you have capacity to do is treasure a thing. Sitting up there like Mary, like, Lord, I, I see all the gifts. I see baby Jesus. I, I hear everybody confirming the prophecies. I see my man still here. He ain't leave me. God, I, I see it all. But, but Lord, I, I'm just going to treasure this. Just, I'm just going to treasure this. And what else? Not only does she treasure it, but she ponders it in her heart. Sometimes we got to make meaning of the blessings. Some blessings bring you so far out of your norm that you have to literally build a new life around the blessing God has given you. That, that's what happens to Mary. We don't talk about it. But, but, but Mary and Joseph now have to build a different kind of life because they've been blessed to be the earthly parents of Jesus the Christ. Later on in the passage, we're going to deal with it next week. We see that they can't even stay there long. They got to flee and get up because folks have it out for them just because they've been asked to carry and nurture this blessing from God, this, this Messiah, this one who will save. There's some traumatic things they've got to endure just to get to the promise of Jesus. That's why we're talking today about trauma, treasure, and truth. I want to talk about this process of treasuring what God has done. Because, because treasuring what God has done and pondering what God has done is what Mary ends up doing at this phase of her journey. And it's something that I believe we all owe it to ourselves to do. Okay? Every time God changes your life with a miracle, right? I, I told y'all earlier, the birth of Christ, a miracle. The Messiah actually coming, a miracle. Right. Uh, but but even miracles need to be pondered because miracles change your life. OK, you, you ever been around somebody who lost like 100 plus pounds and they're so grateful that they are able to lose the weight? If they go to their closet, none of those clothes fit anymore. Right. The miracle, the blessing is that they've been able to reach this goal, but, but now they got to ponder, do I get these clothes tailored? Do I buy new clothes? Do I have the budget to do that? Right? It's, it's a wonderful thing, but, but here are some things I now have to ponder as a result of the miraculous. Thank you, Pastor Andrew. Every now and again, hear me, God does something so extraordinary in your life that you literally have to ponder how you go forward from it. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Songs for Black Lives. From, what was it, July and August to now, completely transformed our lives. We are on the road most weeks for this book. Not to preach, not to consult not to speak for this book we had to ponder how we stewarded the blessing we did not expect and some of us get so overwhelmed by the magnitude of the blessing that instead of pondering and treasuring we just do what everybody else does well, they seem excited, so I guess I'm excited. They telling everybody the Messiah is here, so maybe I should call my girls and tell them the Messiah is here. Right? But, 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 but we have to take the time to treasure what God has done, even the good things, especially the good things, and ponder, Lord, what does this new miracle now require of me? How do I respond to the trauma I endured to get where you've placed me? Because I still got wounds. Had a mentor many, many years ago. She said this to me. I'll never forget it. She said that you always preach from your scars, not your wounds. 
because your scars suggest that there has been healing. Your wounds are open and can be continually impacted and infected. So everybody's saying amen, and you up here like, oh, Lord, I'm hit, I'm triggered, I'm hit, and you stuck for another month in that tragedy because it was preaching from your wound and not your scars. I want to submit to you also that when it comes to all the miracles that God places in our lives, sometimes we got to treasure and ponder, have I made it through the trauma? Is it a scar yet, or is it still a wound? Because if it's still a wound, then I'm going to have to pause from having everybody over to the house to meet baby Jesus. Okay? Y'all can come because apparently y'all come in whether I tell you or not. But, but for my people and as for me in my house and the decisions that I can make, I'm going to slow up a little bit. I'm going to treasure and ponder. And I'm going to get the healing I need to move forward whole. Right? Because Mary and Joseph have a long way to go. This baby is a baby. They got a whole lot of stewardship they're going to have to do around Jesus, a whole lot of protecting they're going to have to do around Jesus, a whole lot of defending they're going to have to do about Jesus, a whole lot of arguments they're going to end up in talking about Jesus. They got a whole lot they got to do. They got to treasure and ponder some things, okay? They can't just hop up out there and act like they understand everything because it's taking an angel every season for them to understand what God is doing, okay? Can, <laughs> can we just talk? I was going to talk about this. <laughs> Every season they needed an angel, and I'm not mad at them. Because every now and again, God does some stuff in your life. You'll be like, Lord, is this you? Because um, this is dramatic, and this is different, and this is not what I intended. I'm going to need an angel for this. I'm going to need you to reclaim this. I'm going to need you to claim this. I'm going to need you to make sure that it's you. Every now and again, while you treasure and process your trauma and treasure the good news, you need God to explain to you that this this is of the Lord. God, I'm trying to treasure it. I'm trying to ponder it because it took a whole lot of trauma to get here. And I know you're not the God of trauma, so I need you to give me some scars, not wounds. And now I need to be clear that this thing I'm treasuring is of you because it is changing my very life. When you are in the will of the Lord, it changes your life. When you give God a real yes, it changes your life. And I'm not even talking about for the better all the time. I'm just saying it changes your life. I'm just saying when the old folks say some things I used to do, I can't do no more. That's real. When folks say every, I used to be able to go here, but now I can't. That's real too. Because every now and again, when you give God a real yes, stuff changes in your life and you cannot go back. So you better make sure it's God. Trauma, treasure, and my last point, and I'm done, is truth. Ha! Ah, truth. Truth. Ah! Listen, every now and again, God chooses us to bring something forth in the world, literally and metaphorically, that points to the truth of who God is. That's why it was so traumatic to birth. That's why there was so much hardship. That's why there were so many people that did not understand it. That's why there were so many folks that were trying to shut it down. Because whenever God uses you to be a signpost to God's truth in the world, you're often shedding light on something that's been hidden for a long time. Okay? I don't believe that any of us show anything for the first time. I, I just don't. I just, yeah, I just don't. I don't believe that any of us are the first ones to have a particular revelation. Right? Because uh, even, look, in the four-part definition of womanism, I got my brother here. You know, when she says, Mom, I'm going to Canada and I'm taking some slaves with me, the mother says it wouldn't be the first time. And we just believe in our being that we are never the first ones to have a revelation. We are never the first ones to see something different. But God makes sure that there are always witnesses to God's truth. And you may not be the first one, but you might be required to shed some light on something that's been hidden. 
Mary and Joseph were not the first ones to speak of a Messiah. People have been talking about a coming Messiah for centuries. Mary and Joseph were not the first ones to confirm that the Messiah was present, but Mary was assigned to give birth to the truth of God, that God keeps God's promises, and what God said God would do, God has done. When you're truly in the will of God, that's how you know you're in God's will. Don't matter what field you're in. Don't have to be ministry. Don't matter what field you're in. The way you know you're in the will of God is when the thing God has asked you to do points light to God's truth that people are trying to hide. The, the, the way you know, I don't care what field you're in, that you are in God's will is when what you are up to in the world brings light to something that folks are trying to hide and ignore. Something that speaks to the truth of God, the true character of God, the true nature of God, the true wisdom of God, the true joy of God, the true uh, capacity of God. Whatever your field is, you know you're in God's will when your work is about shedding light to what God is up to. The truth that God is that people are trying to hide and ignore. Mary is given the assignment of caring for the Messiah who is the walking embodiment of God's truth. And y'all, I'm done, but I wanna encourage you this way. Christmas is a powerful season because there are so many lessons in the birth of Jesus. That's why churches all over the world can have church on Christmas day and we're going to all preach different sermons. Might be the same text, different sermons. Because there's so much in the birth of Jesus that we pull from, that we learn from, that we take counsel in. What I want us to take counsel in today is that trauma, treasure, and truth are lessons that I believe Mary teaches us at Christmas. Every now and again, when you're doing something for God, you run into traumatic experiences. No room in the end. Having to explain to your loved ones what God has done that you did not ask for. Having no clothing for your child. Having to deal with strangers that act like they know you. Mary had all these traumatic experiences because she had been called to do something for the Lord. And in that yes, she had to navigate all the mess when trying to rhyme, but it happened. So I wanna first speak to somebody, I'm in the invitation now. I wanna first speak to somebody who needs prayer because you said yes to God. And you've had to deal with crazy trauma. No room in the inn. Maybe you literally don't have a place to lay your head. You've had to deal with some crazy trauma where because of what God has done in your life, you've gone home to your spouse, to your children, to your parents, to your best friends, trying to explain it, and they trying to get rid of you quietly because they don't understand what God is doing. I want to speak to someone who, because you gave God a yes like Mary, you've had all these traumatic experiences, all these disagreements with folks you love, all this trying to make sense because you know God said, you know what God said, but, but God didn't make plain all the steps until God does it. I want to speak to whomever you are and say to you that your trauma is valid and it is real. Okay? It don't just get washed away when God brings to pass whatever God said God would do. But I will tell you this. The Lord promises never to leave or forsake you. And God will illuminate what God is doing in your life, not only through how you have to explain it, but God will send some angels to your loved ones 
God will send some confirmation through some viable source that they didn't even anticipate. They're going to see something on social media. They're going to run into somebody on the subway and your phone may just ring. I get it now. I, I understand it now. I, I apologize that I could not rock with you in this thing. I want to speak to somebody who's going through the trauma associated with a real yes to God. Because a real yes will have you on your face, on your knees, like, Lord, Lord, is this what you said for real? Because we're the, we're the people that's supposed to be my help. Lord, is this really what you said? Because where's the provision? My, my money is funny and my change is strange, as the old folks would say. Lord, is this really what you said? Because I could have been doing something else. Y'all ain't got to raise your hand, but I know you in here. Uh, where the, I could have been doing something else, saints. <laughs> Lord, I really could have been doing something else. <laughs> could have been doing something. This is traumatic. I could have been doing something else. I know you're in here. I know you on the airwaves. But your yes was real. And because your yes was real, you can't walk away from that thing even if you tried. And so my prayer for you, going through the trauma associated with the, with the misunderstanding of your yes, is that God would send some people who understand you. Come on, I'm a living witness. You only need a couple of folks that get it. You only need a couple of folks, some errands to hold up Moses' arms. You only need a couple of folks who can see what God has shown you. You only need a few people who can understand what the Lord is doing, who will stand in the gap for you when you don't feel like doing it no more. Come on, I'm praying for you, those of you who are traumatized by your yes, that you will never have any lack in your life. Feels like a prophesy. Let me go ahead and do that. I prophesy to you. I decree and declare that because of your yes, you will never have any lack lack in your life I decree and declare there will always be a manger waiting for you where your baby will lay their head I decree and declare there will always be some shepherds who can confirm that the Lord has done a thing I decree and declare there will always be gold and frankincense and myrrh I decree and declare that the one who wants to leave you quietly will come closer to you and speak on your behalf and and register you in their family and name you in the lineage that connects you to the king of kings i decree and declare that because of your yes babies will leap when you show up i decree and declare that because of your yes lives will be changed and while you're treasuring and while you're pondering god is working some things out on your behalf Come here, traumatized people. I decree and declare that nothing that you have done for the goodness of the Lord will be in vain. I decree and declare that your latter will be greater than your former. I decree and declare that you will be the head the tail above and not beneath the lender and not the borrower because of your yes oh my oh my that's for the traumatized folks now for those who are treasuring come on we going into a new year for those who are treasuring for those who understand, God, I heard you right. For those who are still amazed that God called you. For those who understand that things are changing rapidly. Things are changing rapidly. Things are changing rapidly. God says, just ponder it, baby. Just ponder it. Don't kill it. Just ponder it. Don't walk away from it. Just ponder it. Just think on those things. Just shut your mouth. Don't give a yes. Don't give a no. Just ponder it. God says, ponder it. I called you by name. Ponder it. Let them confirm. Ponder it. Let them prophesy. Ponder it. God says, go ahead and treasure it and ponder it and 
in this season, you ain't got to lift no weight. In this season, you ain't got to place no phone calls. Just ponder it. Oh my, oh no. The Lord says, I've seen your labor. Ponder it. The Lord says, you did not get weary in well-doing and in due season, this season, you're going to reap a harvest and ponder that thing. Ponder your harvest. Ponder your harvest. Don't close the door. Ponder it. Don't close the door. Treasure it. God says, you've done enough. The work in this season is over. T.I. said, the wait is over, homie. Oh, come on. For those of you in your treasure season, I need you right now to give God a ponder praise. I'm pondering it. I receive it. I understand it. Come on, even on YouTube. Even on Facebook, God, I know what you said. I'm afraid of it. I don't expect it, but I will ponder it. I will treasure it because the work is done. And lastly, 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 those of you walking in truth. <laughs> oh my, lastly, those of you for whom your truth makes people uncomfortable. Folks like Minister Jalisha, who ain't gonna let them rest till they get it right. For those of you, when you open your mouth, people are afraid because they know you're speaking the truth. For those of you who challenge systems, every time you open your mouth, Come on, lift those hands. For those of you with the trauma of always being the only one to speak up, gets heavy about this time of year. God says, I still need you. Come on, this word is different from the treasuring, folks. Those of you who are in this season of truth where whether it's on your job, whether it's in your family, whether it's in your friend circle, whether it's in your relationship. You just, people be like, why don't you just shut up? Why you always got something to say? It's just like fire, shut up in your bones where, where you really can't help it. You have to proclaim the truth. God says, I hear it so clearly in my spirit. I still need you. So beloved, if that's you, the cost of bearing the truth is heavy. Jesus is a living example of that. There were no easy days in Jesus' life because he was a continual bearer of truth. And lies and deception can't, can't, can't stand truth. But God still needs you. You are a divine mouthpiece for the Holy One. So keep talking, keep agitating. Keep getting on false nerves. Keep disrupting. Because while you may not see the fruit, the seeds are being planted. Okay, hear me. You may not see the fruit in your lifetime, but you're planting the kinds of seeds that will allow generations to come to fight that battle no more. It's one of my favorite things about scripture. And we can always have some battles to face, but every now and again, God says, yeah, you got other stuff to fight, but this battle, you're going to fight no more. So y'all are helping somebody not have to fight the battle you're in anymore because you used your voice. And God says, I still need you. Trauma, treasure, and truth lessons from Mary. Come on, let me pray over you. God, we thank you. 
Thank you, Lord, for showing up. Thank you, Lord, for reassuring us. Thank you, Lord, for depositing into us. Now, God, wherever we fall, we pray that you would seal this word. Give each person what they need. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation that has come from your word. God, we ask that each person would continue to walk in the direction you have guided them. Because they gave you your yes, I pray, Lord, that they will never feel disconnected from you. That they will always feel the Emmanuel God with us presence that we're reminded of on this Christmas season. God, we thank you for how you've met us here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands.